I am Little Red Rooster. Too lazy crow for days. But I am Little Red Rooster. Too lazy crow for days. I keep all the animals in my front yard upset in every way. Oh yeah. Where'd you get off? Good God. Hey, how y'all was? Y'all was, I reckon. <laughs> God. This is Old Gator Show Creek Brewery. And today we got a real, real, real nice treat for you. I, I call it a twofer. No, I got my teeth in, but we're going to call it a twofer. It's a twofer one video. How about that? Um. Today is my launch of my Show Creek Sunday Chat, SCSC. And I'm also launching a new YouTube channel called Show Creek Meets and More. I, I know um, uh, somehow or to another you got to have two channels. You can't do two things in one channel, but... This is a, kind of an, an, an inaugural event, and uh, I just wanted to showcase uh, my, my wine that I, that I racked last week, the one we tasted over on that bridge on Show Creek, and uh, I got some ribeyes marinating in, in about a half a gallon uh, of my wine. We'll just give us a glass full. Oh, ain't she pretty? Isn't that pretty? I tell you what. But anyway, today on my uh, Show Creek Sunday Trap, uh, we're going to talk about grains. Now, I know it's Sunday and I'm drinking wine, but shoot. Uh, it, it ain't no deal. Hell, Catholics, they drink wine on Sundays. Lutherans. <laughs> El Lutherans, they drink wine every day, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize for that. I ain't getting into all that. That's just my sense of humor. Um, but while I'm getting my grill ready and my steaks ready, uh, we'll talk a little bit about grains. Now, you know, a lot of, a lot of new people coming into home brewing, they might not know what they're getting into. Especially if they just start, you know, go balls out and start brewing all grains. Ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. You gotta start Summer's Place, right? But e even me, I, I learned something last week. I, I, I watched videos and learned things. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I, I, I watched a little video on grains. That some, there's some things that I didn't know. I, I, I knew some of it, but I didn't know all. I mean, I don't know everything. But today we're going to touch on that a little bit. I got me some notes wrote down that I took while I was watching that video. Uh, we're going to talk about base malts, uh, your Pilsner malts, your pale malts, your stout malts, uh, your, your Vienna malts, your, your, uh, what do you call it, Caris, 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 Carousel, uh, Munich malts, uh, German malts, American malts, and specialty malts. We'll try to get that all covered in a, in a short amount of time, so if y'all just sat down and be quiet back, uh, hey, you in the back, sit down and be quiet. Teacher's trying to talk up here now. All right, your base malts will give you a little bit of flavor or no flavor. That is going to be your what imparts or what. That's going to give you your, your fermentable sugars. As you as you're mashing them, it's going to release all the enzymes 
in, in the malts to uh, in the grains to uh, extract all the sugar so you have fermentable sugar uh, you know to get your alcohol well uh, with, with your base malts you're gonna have to have a little bit of flavor and aroma right so you're gonna want to use some um, oh some uh, uh, malted barley uh, that's gonna give a lot of flavor it's gonna give a full body flavor and, and just a little bit of a, that barley aroma uh, th those two pair together really well you know I mean your base malt be like a two row or a crystal malt uh, and then you want to use your uh, 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 yeah, your, your malted barley to go with that so you can you know it'll balance the two so it out start adding your hops and everything and it's just not going to be all willy-nilly and who knows what it's going to taste like right <clears throat> now we got we, we got your pilsner malt which is just you know like a glass of Budweiser or Coors Light or heaven forbid a Milwaukee's best oh god <laughs> but that, that's your Pilsner, you know, just your regular run-of-the-mill, low-alcohol beer. And there's not much you can really uh, mix with that other than like a, a, a crystal. A crystal malt will add a little bit of flavor. Or, or a carouspel. Uh, I... I <laughs> That word leaves me for some reason. I don't even ever wrote it down, but I remembered it. But, um, you know, that, that's for your basic Pilsners. Now, you move on to a stout, that gets a little bit different. Uh, you want to, uh, you know, you use a pale, a pale malt, again, like a two row. And you also want to use a Marisada. That'll give it the body, the, the, that strong body, uh, mouthfeel, taste, the stout taste, you know, like a Guinness. What? And, and, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that's about all you want to use on a stout is a, is a Marisotter and a, uh, and a pail, you know. You can't, on a stout, you can also use a, a chocolate, chocolate malt. That'll give a little bit more flavor. It won't give the, it won't impart much chocolate flavor, but it'll give it that earthy, full, rich body that you're after, you know, like a Guinness, you know. It, it's real, he it's a heavy beer, but it drinks light. You know, those go good real well with steaks and, you know, briskets. Uh, uh, not so much with pork. That's, pork is too light for a stout beer. Um, and then you got your, your, your Vienna malt. Adds a little bit of taste uh, uh, to, your, to your other malts. You know, you kind of want to use that for like a... A Hefeweizen or maybe even an IPA uh, and, and and Munich malt uh, pairs well with uh, with the uh, Vienna to get again for, for for flavor and aroma not so much for the for the uh, the, the sugar you know the converting the sugars you know, it's not very fermentable grain now, why, why you, on firm on, on your on your on your grains? Whether you're doing an extract brew, which is which in, all the all the all the extract brew entails is, is your uh, uh, your flavor grains. Uh, when when you steep your your your, your extract grains, uh, that doesn't draw out any of your uh, fermentable sugars. Now. Uh, that's why they're called extract because you know in, in an extract kit you get uh, a malt that has all the all the fermentable sugars in it. It either comes in liquid or dry. 
And depending on what you're making, uh, you can use a liquid and a dry at the same time because some of the dry malt may not have very many fermentable sugars, but it will have the, the uh, all the, the rest of the grains that you need for the flavor and the aroma. And then of course, you know, then you add your hops to give you all that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking. I talk about IPA, which is mostly pale malts. Uh, if you know what style of beer you want, determines your base malts. Again, you, your base malts is the malts is, is the grain that you use for your fermentables, and uh, then then you can use other, you know, your your, your aroma and, and flavor malts to go with that. And it's perfectly fine to taste test your grains. You know, you pop up in your bag, get you a pinch of it, chew it around, get, let your saliva dissolve some of the, the grain, the sugar. That'll give you somewhat of what your beer is going to taste like. E even your, um, your aroma and flavor grains, chew on them a little bit. That'll give you some idea of what it's going to taste like. Um, and it, I mean, it's just, it, you know, just like cooking, you always got to taste what you're cooking. I mean, you can't, well, I don't recommend it just taking a bite out of a raw ribeye and see what, it, I mean, if you don't know what a ribeye is, come, come to Gator's house and I'll, I'll teach you what a ribeye tastes like, I guarantee you. And there's, you got malt, you know, different malts come from different regions of the world. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna like brew a, a German Hefeweizen, you know, which is a, a German pale ale, you're gonna want to get uh, grains that come from Germany. Or if you're gonna do a New England IPA, you want some grains that come from the good old USA. Uh, it, it de depends on what region of, of brew you want. Like you know, if you want to brew an Irish stout or, uh, you know, an Irish milk stout, get some grains from Ireland or Scotland or just wherever you want. They're all over the internet. You know, you can get grains just about anywhere anymore. Um, I'll have some links on this video to where you can get grains and whatnot. I usually get all my grains from a local, <clears throat> oh, brew shop here in Joplin called, called Jugs. <laughs> uh, they, they did me pretty good. They got excellent products there and I've never had any trouble with the grains being bad, sour or old or anything. I mean, and plus they, they crush my grains for me for free because they know me, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, they know us as the Kansas people. It's kind of funny. We're only like... Um, well, 10 miles, give or take, and uh, you know, when we go in there, I can't believe you guys drove all the way from Kansas. Man. Okay, I'm going to keep it talking a little bit. Again, this is a, a two-part video. One, uh, I'm going to uh, knock the dust off my grates. If I can find my dust grater knocker off them. Uh, I'll keep trying to look at you and get my daggum goat off my other smoker. <laughs> so I can get my steaks. There's, there's, there's our little goat. Um, anytime Dad's out cooking, he thinks he's got to be right here with him. And you heard, you heard, the, you saw the little piggy walk by, and you heard him squeaking. He had to lay down here for Mom for a belly rub. <laughs> Pardon me. It was kind of funny. I was uh, trying to hold the phone hold the camera with one hand and petting the goat with the other hand and rubbing the pig with my foot uh no we're not gonna eat mom's hair all right i apologize for the interruption we're just cut simple country folks live out in the country uh, doing what we do and do what we do best and we have you know animals 
feisty is my companion goat. When I had cancer, uh, uh, she gave her got him for me for a companion. That little fella, he sleeps with me, believe it or not. I ain't afraid of, I ain't ashamed to admit it. He'll snug her right up next to me. Um, anyway, back to my cooking now, part of it. I, in my smoker, I got my steaks marinating in my, in my wine. And I also have my oak chips <laughs> that I took out of the wine that I'm going to put on my fire and I'm going to uh, smoke my steaks first and let them get all smoky flavored and boy, and then I'll slap them on a hot fire and get them all grilled up. Anyway, no, uh, um, again, this is for people that might be new to brewing and people like me that just really didn't understand a whole lot about a whole lot of grains. You know, I did some research and studied on it and watched videos and I learned a lot. I, you know, I, I learned that not every grain is fermentable, but I kind of knew that. You know, you got, especially with your extract brewing, you know, you got called specialty grains that's just for flavor for flavor and aroma you know all your formidables again like I said comes from your malt extract and your dry extract slow down hot rod <laughs> um, that's, that's just about all I got on that uh, really uh, there ain't too much to delve into I mean I could go on and on and on about the science and the and the chemistry of the break, but I ain't got a a whiteboard to make all those little chemistry diagrams, the the CH and the H2O and the O2 and the whatever it was, sugar. I, uh, anyway, I, 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 I can't make them diagrams anyway. You gotta have a slide rule to figure all that stuff out anyway. But uh, now, uh, but I'm. I, I'm again like my video from Thursday. I get ahead of myself and I'm back up. But right now I'm kind of right where I need to be. These two videos or this video of two, uh, well, whatever. You, it's not a two part. It's, it's two parts. <laughs> um, kind of for new people, and it's for. Uh, people that's been doing it a while just for the entertainment value anyway. I hope I can offer some entertainment <laughs> But um, no, I'm looking around cuz I, I get this I, PTSD con anyway uh, I get lost numerous times. I hate it. I do hate it with a passion But no, this is my wine that, that I'm back the other day that we tasted on that bridge it, it's cool now. Oh, it's, I don't know, it's dark. It, it's pretty, it's cleared up a lot more. And, um, it's gotten a lot, a little bit sweeter. It, it actually tastes really, it's very palatable. And I'm gonna drink this with my steaks after a while. I'm gonna give the she gator a taste. It's a lot better than it was Thursday. Hey, Mr. Jingles. <laughs> that little jingle buddy right there. He's my little buddy. We acquired him about three months ago. That's not bad. I taste the oak in it. Yeah, it's very and the good. I, I taste the smoky oak. All righty then. Anyway, this video <laughs> here is, just, is my first. I, yeah, this is my little I, jingle. I apologize. No, he's a little ham, no pun intended. <laughs> if I get my feisty goat off my, my my smoker, I'll get my steaks and put on here and, and my wood chips. I'll show you my wood chips. They're a nice purple color. Uh, I need to take that off anyway so I can put my chips. Feisty, get down. <laughs> uh, anyway, like I was saying, this is for this is my first. Show Creek Sunday chat. I'm starting to get a little bit comfortable in front of the camera because I, I, I know there's like, what, three people watching me. 
I'd rather play in front of 3,000 than, than three. <laughs> Yeah, that's the difference between blues players and jazz players. Jazz players, they play 3,000 notes in front of three people. Blues players play three notes in front of 3,000 people. I'm a blues player. <laughs> oh my God. Every time this camera comes on our animals, they think they gotta be right there. Um, if you'll give me a minute, I'll, I'll get my steaks and everything and we'll be right back. Uh, these are my wood chips that I had in my wine. You know, I dried it. Some of them are still a little bit damp, but hey, wood chips, you kind of want damp, add a little bit of more smoke and, and everything, but they're kind of purpley. That's all right, because they've been soaking in my wine. I'm going to add these to my fire real quick. <laughs> Pardon me. Mm. Oh, hell, Gator, just get your hand full. There, oh God, mighty! You ain't gonna believe this. Well, I wish this was smell of vision because I mean, as soon as that them chips hit that fire, oh Lord! I don't need that grill. I don't. I do need this one. Now, here, here's my steak. That I've been. I, I got some spices in it too. Okay. Um. They've been marinating in my wine. We'll put that on there. Yeah, like that. And oh yeah, we'll close the lid and let that smoke some. I'll use some of that for basting. If I can keep feisty gold out of it. The lush, no. <laughs> No, I don't let none of my animals drink. That, that's just wrong. I've seen people give dogs beer and just let them get passed out dry. I, I like, I always want to beat their ass, you know? <laughs> I, I'm an animal lover. But anyway, back to cooking and drinking and talking. and uh, Again, like I said Thursday, you know, um, it, it, it's just a... Uh, Sunday or Show Creek Sunday chat. You know, I said we'll drink a little bit, we'll talk some, I'll tell stories. Uh, but today just happened to be cooking. But um, I remember one time, well, when I was 11, 12 years old, <laughs> I was lucky enough to grow up on a farm. I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky, it depends on how you look at it. I enjoyed the work. I mean, I learned how to drive a tractor when I was seven years old. You know, my God, big old international. Um, I, I I learned how to plow fields when I was seven years old, planting corn. Anyway, when I was 11, 12 years old, me and my cousins and some other uh, farm neighbors, you know, we go around uh, uh, helping each other haul hay. Well, one, one, one time, one summer, uh, we got the bright idea that we was going to party that night after hauling hay. So, the day before we went to haul hay, uh, we, we got some apple juice and some uh, quart mason jars. We filled up apple, uh, mason jars with apple juice and uh, snuck in Granny's pantry, Granny's, <laughs> not Granny's panties, Granny's pantry. <laughs> and uh, got some of her yeast, and we sprinkled some of that yeast on that apple juice, and the next day, I don't know, we had probably six or seven jugs, six or seven jars, and we set them right out in the middle of the hay field, sun beating down, oh my, his body is, my God, you can imagine what the heat did to the to the uh, yeast. It fermented pretty quick, but it didn't, you know, ferment all the way. Anyway, that night we got we got done hauling hay, put the last bale up in the barn. We went and gathered up our basin jars, 
And we, 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 uh, we went out, you know, we went home, grabbed some blankets and pillars and what. We camped out there in front of the barn underneath the moonlight. We popped them daggum mason jars open. We started a sipping on them. That first sip was a little bit doozy, I guarantee you. It was really stout with yeast. I mean, it was like, whoa, you know, it was hard to choke down the, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, sip after sip after sip, it started getting a little bit better. And we started talking, you know, and laughing and carrying on, talking about girls in our class, you know, and just, just having a big old time, big old party. Yeah. Well, as you can imagine, yeah. all that unfermented yeast went right straight yeah. to your belly. We woke, well, we didn't wake up. Yeah. Granddad and Dad come and woke us up. They, you know, kind of nudged us with yeah. their toe over their boots. Yeah. They just laughing and giggling, yeah. and they knowed what happened. They knowed exactly what yeah. went on. And they would, oh boy, we woke up and it was like, oh God, where's the outhouse? <laughs> I guarantee you. Well, we didn't really get in trouble, but they sure worked our butts off that day. You know, made us sweat it all out. I guarantee you, by the time dinner time, dinner time rolled around, we was ready to eat, get all that out, you know, put some, put some food in our belly. It was a long time before we did that again. I'm not saying that we didn't, but we did. But it was a while. <laughs> that was my first experience with home brewing. And uh, I got back into it, you know. I started with the apple juice, you know, with some yeast. And let that go about three or four weeks. That is pretty good stuff. I'll have to show you how to do that or if you, if you already know, I mean. That, you know, you go back to the basics, you know, just keep, go full circle, <laughs> you know, because you, you can get burned out maybe, but uh, try, you know, try something new, try try mead, I, I, I've been learning how to make meads, I made my first <clears throat> mead about a month ago, that, that jalapeno capsicumel, and it turned out wonderful, oh, I, I might do that again. Can you see my smoke? <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's, them, boy, it's smelling good, too. Them wood chips are just kicking in. Oh, my, I wish you could smell this. My gosh. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to wrap it up for right now, and I hope to see you again next Sunday for our Show Creek Sunday chat. I'll leave out the cooking, but... This is just my inaugural uh, cooking channel kickoff. Hell, I know. Hell, I just kicked off this brewing channel. So how am I going to keep up with two channels? We'll set you to find out. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to let it go for right now. I'll probably pick it up and show you what my steaks look like. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, the 16th. Is tomorrow the 16th? 17th. Huh? 17th. 17th. See, I'm a day late and a dollar short already. My God. I'll, I'll probably... Uh, I didn't have the time today. I was going to brew a beer today. I had too many honeydews. But I had more honey don'ts than I had honeydews. Honey, don't do that. Honey, don't do this. <laughs> honey, do that. Oh, I'll tell you what. Between the honeydews and the honey don'ts, feller ain't got time to brew. <laughs> Anyway, I'll probably brew a beer tomorrow, and I'll show you the, the, uh, all of that. And uh, until next time, this is Old Gator from Show Creek Brewery, and we'll catch you later. Bye.